So Sony have sent me their newest vlogging camera, I'm shooting on it right now, it's the Sony ZV-1 Mark II. And that actually makes a lot of sense. The ZV-1 came out around three years ago, which is a lot longer than I thought it had been. There have been some other vlogging cameras in Sony's range of those kind of cameras. So it makes sense to actually update the ZV-1 itself. And so I'm shooting on the Mark II right now. I'm actually using the built-in microphone with the windshield, although I don't really need the windshield for in here, so that you can actually get an idea of exactly what this looks like. I'm gonna shoot pretty much the entire video on this camera. So really only shots of the camera were not shot on the camera. I think that probably makes sense. And while the ZV-1 was a really good vlogging system, and actually I really liked it, for what it was, it was it was a great system for someone who wants to get going with vlogging, with shooting content, without necessarily having to know everything about what they're doing. The camera could take care of a lot of that work, but there were a few things that probably could do with an update. So it's nice to see that Sony have addressed a lot of that on the Mark II. So first and foremost, this is obviously designed for people who are coming maybe from a smartphone, they wanna do content creation, and they want to have that same kind of feeling. While the ZV-1 did provide that, it probably wasn't as intuitive, as usable as it could have been. Whereas I must say, the ZV-1 Mark II, Sony said it's going to be a lot more usable in terms of the screen, just all functionality on the touchscreen. And I kind of was a little bit skeptical, if I'm totally honest with you. But really, since using it, I can tell you it is incredibly easy to only use the screen. So you really can just sit there as if you were on a smartphone and actually just set everything up on the screen. I've got the screen actually flipped around so I can see myself right now, which is really nice. The camera has a tally light as well, so I know it's recording as well as a red frame that comes around the screen to actually be able to show me that I am recording, which is really nice. But let's get into some of the things that are a little bit different about this camera, a little bit different from the ZV-1 and why I think this is definitely a better vlogging setup than the original ZV-1. So first up, we've got a different lens here. We've got 18 millimeter to 50 millimeter f1.8 to f4. That means you've got a much wider field of view. If I actually just move around a little bit here, you can really get a sense for how much better this is. Now, I'm not outside vlogging because the weather is so bad. It's windy, it's raining, it's not gonna work. You know, this has got a windshield on the microphone and that's great. This weather is not, is not the one. I mean, for me, more so than even the camera. But that lens is a much, much better focal range to be working with when it comes to content creation like this, because when I wanna vlog like this, 18 millimeters is much easier to work with, whereas 24 millimeters on the ZV-1 was a bit close. You've got a one inch sensor in the camera as well as 20.1 megapixels. And you've got the option to shoot photos as well as video like this. Video you can shoot 4K up to 30 frames a second as well. So I'm shooting 4K right now, 25 frames a second. You can also shoot full HD up to 120 frames a second. So you can get some nice slow motion. So you've got a lot of different kind of options there for how you want to do things. Photos for thumbnails, video like this in 4K, and then you can do slow motion kind of B-roll stuff as well which is nice. We also see a lot of things you probably would expect from a camera within the ZV range, so things like the product showcase setting. We also see the bokeh switch as well, which allows me to very easily just press one button and it'll either defocus the background or focus it back up. And speaking of that, this also has the multi-face recognition that we saw on the ZV E1, which is a really nice kind of thing where if I'm vlogging like this by myself and I have a blurred out background, it'll actually stop down the aperture once it sees another person enter the frame. So if I was vlogging like this and I walked over to someone, they entered the scene, they entered the vlog essentially, the camera knows to stop down to make everyone in focus. Now speaking of autofocus for a second, this is very fast, it's very precise, I'm not surprised. I don't think any of us are particularly surprised. When I look at the screen to the side here, there's a little square around my eye. If I, for any reason, make the camera lose my eye, it draws a square around my face, it tracks me around the scene, I can move this, no problem, backs and forwards and all kinds of stuff. Just not a problem at all with autofocus. Again, at this point with Sony, I'm just not surprised. In fact, I'd be surprised if there was a problem. There's also real-time tracking for humans and animals. So obviously I've got it set to humans right now, but if I wanted to film my dog, for example, I could change that to animals and it's gonna do real-time tracking with her. We also see the cinematic vlog setting, which we saw on the ZV E1 as well. I've just turned this on, and essentially this is a really, really useful way for anyone to be able to make cinematic content, even if you don't really know how to do that or what you need to do to make it look cinematic. So it's adjust the aspect ratio. It's actually done that, I can see it on the screen to the side. It's adjust things like the frame rate to make it as cinematic as possible. It will set the different looks and the moods 
to be the most cinematic. I think it actually sets it directly to S Cinetone. And it just means that I am able to then make the most cinematic content that I can make without really having to put much effort in. The camera is able to kind of take care of all of that for me, which is fantastic. We also see the looks and the moods, which I just mentioned, from the ZVE-1 as well. So you've got five looks, four moods. So you can really change the actual style of your image while you're filming. I think the main thing here with the ZV-1 Mark II, it's just ease of use. This is something that someone coming from a smartphone can make good content, good looking content, it's easy and it's, you know, it, the camera's gonna do most of the work for you if you don't know what you're doing. Of course, you can pop all this stuff into manual as well. It's incredibly kind of usable now. It's much better than ZV-1 in terms of the screen and the usability there. I really do feel like it's just very, very straightforward. Right now, for example, I can stop and start the recording. I can change all of my different settings just on the screen, which means I don't kind of have to fumble around with the buttons on top of the camera. I think it's also just incredibly accessible. So someone coming from a smartphone, someone wanting to get into this kind of stuff, but maybe doesn't know where to start, someone who wants to film things for TikTok maybe, or Instagram, or whatever it might be, YouTube, but just doesn't know where to start. This camera just provides such a great starting point for someone like that. There'll be a link down in the description so you can go and check out the full spec, all the pricing, all that fun stuff of the camera. Absolutely worth going to have a look at that, I think, if you're interested in content creation, in vlogging, any of that stuff. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well. There's new content all the time. I will see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.